Okay, so uh, in this talk, I will briefly uh, talk about the IoT for industry in general. So not only for manufacturing, but industry in general, non-consumer market. And afterwards, I will talk about the challenge to do IoT for industrial application. And then we will give you some examples how Siemens is disrupting the business of traditional industry. And of course, we want to offer you some opportunities to work together with us. Let's continue. <clears throat> so industry uh, actually is a gold mine for IoT. When we talk about IoT for consumer market, always sometimes you have to be asked with the question, what the value of that data for industry? It's very clear. And this business model is also quite mature. So what we did is actually we installed some sensors at the customer's plant, oh, sorry, at the customer's plant, and then we captured the data into the cloud. Afterward, we were able to, do, to use advanced algorithm. We established the structure of the data, which data is from which machine, and what's the relationship of this machine. Then we come to the re final report. We give the report to the end customer. After our calculation, we tell them, look, this part of the process is not in its optimum data. You may want to improve your operation in this way, in that way. So everything is done automatically after you establish the data and the structure of the data. And of course, the algorithm will automatically discover what can be improved, what's, what's missing, and uh, whether your, your, the performance of your plant is on average or higher or even lower than your competitor. So that is very valuable. And uh, by doing that, Siemens got one million pounds for three years just by doing data service. So in this market, no one will question you what's the value of the data. The value is here. <clears throat> okay. However, we still have a lot of technical and non-technical hurdles to overcome. For example, if you look at this picture, you will see, oh yeah, I could see the status of the machine and I could see what's happening inside and probably I could generate some value out of data. Wait a second. We have some challenge. The first one, okay, this picture is very boring, very last century uh, picture, but actually it's what's happening in industry. It's so old fashioned. So people use, for, for the field controller, actually they program the field controller in this way. There are some values, bool value, some uh, decimal value, some uh, another bool value, another binary value. So you have no idea if, even if you have access to that controller, you don't know what's happening. You have no idea. And even if you have physical access, you don't know whether that bool value means the motor is turning on or off. And even if you have access, will the field controller allow the data to be uploaded to your system to do the data analysis? You're not sure. And uh, you don't understand the communication protocol. That's the reason IoT is so slow, happening so late in industrial applications. You have no idea where to get the data. And the other point is, there are a lot of data that could give you the hint, the meaning of that, that data, that metadata. It comes from every stage of your, uh, uh, your, uh, your product, starting from your product design to the plant design, to the production engineering, to the execution of your product, production, and of course, through the service. So at every stage, you have documents, you have metadata, and you have data. But 
even if you get a small chunk of data, you don't understand the meaning. So metadata, for example, look at this picture. It's uh, slightly better. So every, every uh, variable is given uh, a symbol. Look at this speed. It's a real value. OK, so whether the speed is rotation per minute, rotation per second, or is it the linear speed, you have no idea. And look at this one. It turn left, turn right. What's the relationship of those two values? Are they mutually exclusive? Or they, they are talking about different things? So you need to understand how a motor works to understand the meaning of this data. So such kind of metadata could easily get lost when you try, when you try to acquire data from industrial applications. So, um, of course, everyone has noticed that there are many challenges. So I'm talking about some practice, what we did to overcome such kind of challenge. This is a machine tool, a pilot we did back in China. So if you look at this picture, if we want to monitor the status of this machine tool, what do you do? Very naturally, this is a smart machine. So it has a digital controller. It has a communication interface, everything. So you, you, you probably think, well, we could tap into that controller through some electrical interface. That's what we did in the beginning. And it doesn't work, even though this machine has a Siemens controller. That's how siloed the traditional industry looked like. So what we did is actually to break the barrier from, break away from the traditional industry. What we did, actually we installed a lot of very inexpensive cheap sensors, like the current sensor, vibration sensor, like the, the uh, photo detector to, to find out whether people are loading uh, metal onto this machine or unloading um, from this machine. And also, we detect whether a worker is nearby to monitor, to operate this machine. And what we get from, from those very inexpensive sensors is actually we are able to find out whether the machine is operating, whether someone is loading, uh, loading the workpiece onto the machine, whether someone is unloading, whether there is a worker nearby. So basically, you, you, use, you break away from the traditional approach. You get the data very cheaply from the machine. And with the data, we are able to uh, upload the data to MES system and uh, tell the plant operator, look, you want to improve your machine operation. You want, to, um, uh, you want to find out why the productivity is so low. Now I give you the data. I give you the analysis. And obviously, such kind of information is very, very valuable for the plant operator, for the plant owner. Traditionally, the, the information actually goes slowly from the low, lower layer, from the field worker until the top management. And a lot of information is lost. So IoT is able to break the barrier and uh, release the information to the management to, to find the value, OK? Um, and this is the other very interesting example. <clears throat> In Berlin, actually, uh, the city government, uh, city uh, traffic police, decide that they want to uh, offload the traffic detection, traffic uh, information uh, to, to the other company. And uh, it's a kind of public-private partnership, PPP. So they told Siemens, can you do that? We said, yes. Give us a chance. We will show you the result. And obviously, traffic police won't let us to tap into the traffic controller, won't, uh, won't let us to tap into the traffic light. It's not allowed. 
because legally we don't want to have the liability, legal responsibility for that. So what we did, actually we invented such kind of um, detector. So this detector is self-contained, very inexpensive. It just has a traffic camera, a, a traffic camera, a solar panel to capture some energy, and uh, some battery inside, and uh, a very simple um, processor inside, and a communication module to transmit the data back. So the data we got, traffic volume, traffic speed, and the type of vehicle. That's very interesting because with that data, we can provide very, very valuable service, not only to the government, but also to external authorities. External, uh, for example, for, for the city planning, for also for, for even, we, uh, uh, even to some uh, radio, to some, um, to some map uh, service provider. Okay, if you look at the number of detectors, it's quite sparse comparing to the density of the city street. But, and of course, in the first step, you don't get a lot of, um, le uh, LOS means level of service, you, so you don't have uh, the map all with the traffic data. No problem. We tap into the other source with that that the floating car data. So we collaborate with the taxi um, company uh, in Berlin and they installed these uh, floating, uh, the uh, travel speed and the, uh, whether the taxi has passenger or not. So we also upload that information. And by combining data from different sources, we are able to actually achieve this very densely uh, um, calculated data. So basically for every street, whether we have that detector or not, we are able to see whether the traffic situation in that street, how, how does it look like. Okay, so now you see that start, we, we don't try to back to, to the traffic police, please give me data, please open your interface. That does not work, obviously. So what we did is to break away and uh, find the, uh, find the uh, I, do the IoT solution on our own. So we start from the traffic demand matrix. We do traffic detection and we capture the data of construction site and the event. And just now I showed you that we, we were able to get the traffic situation. And with algorithm, we were even able to do short-term and mid-term forecast, and obviously everyone recognized the value of that data. <clears throat> okay, so to summarize our practice, first, try to break out the old system, especially the closed system. You, will, you would spend a lot of effort trying to find out what's happening inside their automation system, inside their controller, so why don't you find the other way around. <clears throat> and the other uh, very important lesson is to re-establish the meaning of the data. So you need to add the context to the data. Uh, a very smart way we are doing back in Berkeley is actually to uh, look at the data and, uh, and uh, because we understand from which domain we capture the, the data then we are able to re-establish the meaning of the data. Uh, a very simple example is if you capture the temperature and the uh, um, current data from a motor, and you will notice that that temperature data does not fluctuate a lot, but the current could go up, could come up and could come down. So by, by observing the data, by understanding the, the data, Come, are coming from a motor, then you could distinguish this data is temperature data, this data is current data. So then you can re-establish the metadata from the sensor, uh, from the data you captured from those sensors. 
And also, a very important lesson is to map the data into a suitable ontology. So the ontology will help you to do automated reasoning. For example, you have a motor driving a gearbox, and now you have problem at the gearbox. If you are a human worker, normally you will understand, okay, very likely the, the problem comes from the motor. So because they, are, they have a rigid link, the motor is driving the gearbox. So we establish such kind of knowledge back into our ontology. And the system will automatically find out, OK, this gearbox is down. And because it's driven by the motor, so I will try to find out what's happening by looking at the sensor data from that motor. And this is how we do the reasoning. Of course, by doing that, you need to have some domain know-how, how a motor is connected to a gearbox. OK, so the last page, I would like to talk about what we could provide um, first. If you, you want to have, if you have interest in product, maybe you want to see whether Siemens could help you. First, we have a lot of partner customer networks. So if you think your technology could be used in this industry, come to us, because we could provide you the pilot opportunity. And uh, our Siemens Research lab, lab could even provide you some uh, funding to do the demo, to do the pilot with us. That would be a perfect reference record for, for, for those startups. And also, we are seeking for companies with technology to capture the data, to establish the domain knowledge, context, and uh, if you have very good data mining algorithm, artificial intelligence, come to us because we need that technology as well. So Siemens is trying to reinvent ourselves. This is why we established our lab in Berkeley and uh, why we come to this event. Thank you.